I am on the third floor of my aunt and uncle's house. I um, When I was a kid, I used to, I kid you not, take these lacy curtains and go like this and pretend to be a bride. <laughs> I should, should probably not be betraying my like little kid self and telling you this, but that's exactly what I used to do. Um, I wanted to make a quick note and just say the last handful of videos that I posted, they were all taken from another social media platform and they were made for friends. So I feel like, well one, they were very pixelated, and another, uh, I mentioned a lot of stuff that maybe didn't make sense in the stories, just because, you know, my friends already knew all those details. Um, so moving forward, I just want to tell stories with greater intentionality and more awareness of my audience. Um, and the intention of this channel is just to share stories about um, my interactions with strangers, you know, abroad, or like I said, on my sidewalk, just people that I bump into and kind of how, you know, even on the most ordinary of days, you can still have that like spark with someone and just how interconnected we actually are on this planet. So this story, um, a couple days ago, I was having a bonfire with my cousins and a couple of their friends, and these are all guys, and they were swapping stories um, prompted by the question, what was like the craziest, what's your craziest story of asking someone on a date? And then at the end, after they all finished this, one turned to me and said, Sarah, what's your story? And I was really grateful that he said this because 10 years ago, I would not have been asked this question. I grew up in a very, very, um, uh, conservative Christian <laughs> atmosphere. And it was so conservative. I mean, it was like, you know, your blouses up to here, your long denim skirts, you only held hands with someone, your first kiss was on your wedding day. That level of uh, traditional and old fashioned. And um, dating was <laughs> anathema maranatha, um, the style of uh, getting hitched was through the method of courtship. And in the method of courtship, um, the girl n definitely never asked first. I mean, you weren't even, you weren't even the first to know if someone was interested in you. You were the second person to know. The person would go, your suitor would go to your father. Or if your father wasn't available, he would go to literally the next male in line, like who had authority over you, would go to your uncle or your pastor or a brother um, and ask permission to pursue you. And then you would be told, and of course, you know, your consent was needed too, but you were not the first, you know, you were not the first in line to know this. So anyway, when I was around 21, I left that world, and that's a whole other story in itself. The only important thing to know that's relevant is that I left it. And I'd say for about four years after, I just didn't, I was so inundated in that courtship model that I... I had no idea. I felt like I was just dropped into the wilderness. I actually, I called it sleeping beauty syndrome uh, that a lot of girls suffer from who went through that um, courtship uh, dogma, dogmatic inundation, um, because you just, it espouses this idea that if you're up in your tower, just sleeping, totally passive, your Prince Charming still will come still will kiss you, still will wake you up, still will claim you. You don't have to be active or involved in the slightest. Literally, you're like dead asleep. So <laughs> I, I didn't want to be that way. I wanted, you know, I wanted to know my desires. I wanted to know my heart. I wanted to be involved. I wanted to have that real connection with a potential partner. But I just had, I was I had no idea how to get there. And I think I was in this sort of like paralysis for a few years. So when I was 25, <laughs> it was three weeks before Valentine's Day, and I decided to kind of like shake myself out of this sleepiness, um, and I should mention too, like, I had definitely fallen in love in my early 20s, and just nothing would ever come of it. Like, the guy would never know. In fact, I remember the Valentine's Day before I went out to eat my poor friend Patrick. We were always each other's, like, consolation dates for Valentine's Day. I think we went out to... Chinese food three years in a row and we were talking about this and I remember telling him I was like yeah you you would definitely know the person I was interested in the room and he's like oh yeah how tell me and I was like he'd be the only one I wasn't talking to <laughs> so that's how dire it was just to set the stage of like this is what I had to get myself out of how do you talk to guys 
Now back in, I don't know what the year this was, I had a flip phone. I don't think dating apps even existed at that point. Maybe like OkCupid or eHarmony did. Um, and I, yeah, it was three, it was literally three weeks before Valentine's Day. I decided to give myself a challenge to ask three strangers on a date. No, not even people I knew, just like someone, you know, that I would bump into in the supermarket or saw on the street. I just felt like I had to do something a little bit rash, just like push the pendulum really far in the other direction just so I could, you know, regain my sense of, um, uh, what's the word, self-efficacy? <laughs> so anyway, what I thought I would do, I was like, okay, how can I do this? How do you do this? I thought I would like type up a little letter and put little notes in my purse that said something like, you're gonna laugh at me, um, hi, like something about you, you know, caught my eye, like you made me smile. So I'm doing this challenge for myself before down Valentine's Day and I wanna, like, I would like to ask you on a date. If you're interested, here's my email. Um, I never even got to the point of typing up these letters because as soon as I like, you know, set my intention of this is what I was gonna do, all of a sudden, all over the place, like boom, 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 I started just seeing opportunities and I definitely grabbed a few. In fact, I did, in those three weeks, I asked three strangers on a date and I got two dates out of it. So the first story, <laughs> the first story, I was, in, um, I was in Barnes and Noble and I would think I was like typing my novel or something, you know, pretty cliche, sipping on my chai latte. And this guy came in and there were tons of available seats around us, but he happened to sit in one next to me and he kind of leaned pretty far back, like he was in my space. But I was like, oh, oh, all right, here's a guy my age, and I was observing him, and I, he was wearing a leather jacket, he was so close I could even like smell the leather in his jacket, and he had like sweeping blonde hair, but then I looked at his jacket, and I saw that stitched on the back, what is the quote, what is it, seven stones and seven stars and one white tree, and I was like, that's the tree of Gondor, and I'm a huge, huge Lord of the Rings nerd, so I was like, okay, okay, all right, you just have to do it, just do it, just say it. And so I reached over and like got his attention and said, um, excuse me, but is that the tree of Gondor? And he turned around and he's like, oh, like no one ever notices that. And I said, yeah, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings nerd. And he was like, oh, I am too. And then just conversation just tumbled out. He told me he had drawn the design, how he got it stitched. And yeah, conversation was so easy, so natural. It blew my mind. I think it blew my mind because I had never done this before. Like, I didn't know that it was possible to talk to someone because I had never tried it. I mean, to like a straight... You know, it's funny. I talked to strangers even before this. Male strangers my age, that was another category altogether. Like, I did not do that. <laughs> so this was very new to me. Um, so anyway, wrapped up conversation. I went back to my chai latte. And I sat there and was like, okay, okay, this is it. This is your moment. This is your first opportunity. You have to do this. And I like played with an edge of my paper for a little bit. Like I wrote my number on it. And I was like, okay, just rip it. And I was like, it's going to sound so loud when I rip it. And just before I ripped it, another girl walked in and sat down next to him. And I observed them. And I was like, oh, they're romantically attached. So, okay, botched opportunity, but that's okay. <laughs> opportunity number two came only a few days later, I was wedding, wedding dress shopping with one of my friends. And I think like bubbles of cupidity must have been floating the air because I was so like overwhelmed by all the romantic feelings of, of the night that I actually locked my keys in the car. So we were sort of, it was winter, we were stamping in the parking lot, it was all slushy, it started to spit snow and uh, we were waiting for triple A and my friend said, well, how about we go in and like grab a bite to eat? There's a Japanese restaurant right there while we wait. I said, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So I think it was maybe nine or 10 at night and the, um, the waitress brought us in and sat us down. There was no one else in the restaurant except for these two guys. And she sat us directly across from them. And my friend took a call and while she did that, I watched these guys. And there was one who was red haired and freckled and he was playing with this giant um, paper mache red, uh, what's the word, like umbrella? parasol? I don't know what it was, but he was like twirling it behind him like he was a geisha or something. And his friend, uh, his friend was very handsome. He was a um, Asian American and he was taking the picture. 
And he must have noticed me watching them because he looked over and he was like, do you want to get in this picture? And not to get allegorical, but like when I, I jumped up and said, sure. And when I crossed that aisle, it was like, it was definitely more of a psychological crossing of a barrier than just a physical one. And I sat and I like put my arm around this uh, freckled red haired guy and the other guy snapped the picture and I went back to my, um, my seat. And then at this point, I think because I was just in that mode of, like, Valentine's challenge, I was like, oh, ooh, I'm going to be really sly. Like, watch, watch how smooth this is going to be. <laughs> I said to him, I was like, oh, you know, could you send me that picture? And he's like, yeah, sure. What's your number? So I gave him my number. He sent me the photo. Um, and... Yeah, so the night went on, um, we had our food, I went home, I actually popped my tire that night, it was midnight, and yeah, he was nice when I chatted with him, I was like, you know, Cinderella and my pumpkin, <laughs> like, my, it was past midnight, so I was just on the side of the road, but I had a friend come pick me up in pajamas, that was sweet of her, but that's not important. So, this guy and I um, texted back and forth a little bit for a couple days, and then I was at a friend's house, watching a romantic comedy, actually. And he texted me and said, would you like to get coffee? Um, I was sitting in front of this movie for a couple hours, so I saw this text late. I remember I went into the kitchen to get another piece of a uh, pie, and I saw it. I said, oh, yeah, you know, I was just about to ask you that today. Please, let's do it. That'd be awesome. And then, you know, trying to sound like a little calm. But then I went back into the living room, and I, like, started dancing around and was, like, rolling all around on the couch, and we could not sit still for the rest of this movie. <laughs> like eating my chocolate peanut butter pie and I was like what do I do I've never done this before my friend was like Sarah first of all just chill I texted another friend who was like I don't know what to do what do I wear and she was like well you should try some skinny jeans and a dark top because it makes you look slender and I said all right I want to look slender <laughs> so I went and bought a whole new outfit I um remember I this this is I had never ever done anything like this before when the night of the date rolled around and my stomach was sick. I remember driving there and just like my son, my stomach was so sour. I was like trying to breathe and just telling myself, I was like, okay, you can do this. Like you, you have no idea what's ahead of you. Like this could actually be something good. Like this could be nice. Um, and then I saw him leaning against the wall of Panera bread and instantly, like as soon as we just talked again, I just felt relaxed. Like the anxiety just dissipated. Um, really cool guy. He was a biochemistry major. He was from California, track runner. Um, he got me a strawberry smoothie. Um, and it was, so it was like a nice, it was a very friendly date. Like he was just as sunny as, as I remembered him in the, um, in the other restaurant, like easy eye contact. Um, but I could tell in the middle of the day, I was like, you know what, I don't, I don't feel like we're really, emo I didn't say this, but I was thinking in my head, I was like, I don't feel like we're really emotionally connecting. And I even stepped away, I like excused myself and went to the bathroom and like looked in the mirror and I was like, what do you think? Yes? No? And I was like, no. Okay. All right. I can tell we're not, we're not really connecting and that's all right. Like he's a nice person, but we're just not really, yeah, it's, it's not quite there. So when we said goodnight, it was like a friendly, you know, polite goodnight, like good luck with studying and all that, but we didn't, we didn't set up another date and that was fine. Like I, I wasn't, um, I wasn't worried about that, but at this point, I was just on top of the world. I mean, I was on fire. I was like, whoa, this is what it feels like, like to be actively involved in your life and like you're allowed to, to like be the person who initiates and be the person who, watch it, he initiated that one, but you know, I was definitely feeling empowered. So <laughs> third stranger that I asked on a date, it's funny, there was a guy that every Friday night when I came back from work, I would go and I would get gas for my car. And so every Friday night at 5.30 p.m., I would walk into this gas station. It was always the same guy. And I'd say, $40 a number seven, please. Same thing. And as Valentine's Day drew around, it occurred to me, I was like, oh my gosh, Sarah, this is the reason secretly, deep down, that you wanted to do this challenge. Like, this is the person that you have been trying to get up the courage to ask out. And um, so this one was definitely the most involved of all the three stories. Um, I planned this out more than any of them. Um, I think it definitely brought up, 
even more anxiety than the last one I just mentioned. Um, and this was, it was, he's just, he is still, I, yeah, he's a wonderful, wonderful guy. I just remember every time I went in there and had a conversation with him, like even just asking like for gas in my car, like I would just leave with this warm feeling. I was like, there's something about his eyes or just, I don't know. I could tell the heart under the yellow, yellow uniform was just good. I could tell. Um, so one night I walked in and said, you know, I see you. I've seen you every night, the last, every, every Friday night, the last few months, like I might as well introduce myself. My name's Sarah. He said, oh, my name's Billy. And I said, oh, Billy. And he's like, oh, actually. And he's just like grinning. He's like, actually, that's not my name. Like I'm Egyptian. This is my name. And he told me it and it was harder to pronounce. And I was like, oh, then I'll call you by your real name. And then we just started chatting. And he told me that um, his, you know, he told me about his family, like four sisters, one brother. Um, he was studying engineering. Um, we, yeah, just a nice conversation about his life. And he told me that in four days, it was going to be his one year anniversary of being in the U.S. And I said, oh my gosh, are you going to, are you going to celebrate? Like, what are you going to do? And he's like, oh, I don't know. Like maybe post a picture of a cake on Facebook. I was like, what? Aren't your friends going to do something? And, um, and I kind of felt bad looking back on it now because he actually didn't really know people there. And, um, he's like, no, I don't think I'm going to celebrate. So the next week, the next Friday, I went in as usual and I was like, okay, this is it. You have to do it. You got to do this. And I walked up to him and I was like, so, uh, oh no, sorry, not the next week. It was three days later. I remember I went into my car and I sat down and I actually wrote down a phonetic pronunciation of his name. And I also looked at a calendar and I calculated, I was like, okay, his anniversary is, is a Tuesday. So sorry, I went in on a Monday and I was like, I don't even know if he's going to be there, but let's see. And in fact, I was such a coward at first that I drove by and was like, oh, I don't see him in there. Oh, well, I'll keep going. And I was like, Sarah, you coward. Turn around and go back in there. Maybe he's in a back room or something. So I turned around, went in. Sure enough, he was in a back room. And I said to him, I said, oh, your anniversary is tomorrow. Like, would you like, would you like to go out with me and celebrate? Like, maybe we can go get hamburgers or go hiking or something. And he just got this big smile on his face and he was like, yeah, I would love that. I said, great. And so I gave him my number um, and then I walked out. So we did end up going out the next day. Really funny little inserted story here though. When I walked out of that gas station, another customer had been in there listening to this conversation. And <laughs> this guy told me later that she had walked up to him afterwards and was like, do you know what that girl just asked you? He was like, no, please help me. What did she say? Because he was still kind of learning English. And, um, and she was like, she just asked you on a date. And, um, and he was like, yes, I know that. But, but what did she ask me to do? Like, like Hawkins? We're going to do Hawkins? And he thought, he thought that I had asked him to play hockey with me. And I laughed so much about this later because I was like, oh my gosh, you were willing to go on this date with me, like without even knowing what we were doing. He was like, yes, of course I was. So I can see I only have one minute left of my uh, memory. I need to clear more memory space on my phone. So I'll just really quickly wrap this up and say we did go hiking. Um, it turned into an awesome friendship. I ran a social club at that time. It was one of those kind of like, again, I could tell like this is gonna, this is a friendship vibe, but it was it still felt like a triumph to me of just like, again, I have completely broken myself out of this paralysis that had lasted for years, for 25 years. Well, I didn't date as a kid, but you know, for years. And from there, I was able to just do so much more, you know, uh, traveling, writing novels, uh, more dating. And yeah, so anyway, this is about to, yep, I'm about to run out of space, but thanks for listening, and uh, I hope you enjoyed these stories, and I will post more soon. Take care.